Learn about the 80th anniversary of a Florence family tradition. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're focused on the 80th anniversary of the Florence Little Theater. And we're visiting with the Honorable Patsy Stone. Good morning, Patsy. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Such a pleasure to be with you. Incredible opportunity not only to think about 80 years of the Florence Little Theater, of course, really to focus on the upcoming production of Kiss Me Kate, which will kick off September 5th. It'll run for a little more than a week. But to think of the thrill of 80 years, it's amazing. And I, I have to repeat 80 just because of the significance of that. I thought we were real special celebrating our first anniversary uh, <laughs> next week um, at the Foreign Civic Center focused on the Boy Scout to Distinguish Citizens Award, but to really think of 80 years. Well, the first is special, but 80 years is remarkable. Um, we began in 1923. First presentation was on the lawn of Mr. James Lynch on West Palmetto Street. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Is there some uh, a historical uh, compendium that have been put together to help follow all the years leading up, or was it was any of those ever misplaced, or have there been a pretty detailed... It's a pretty well-documented uh, run. We've been dark twice in those, those 80 years. Mm -hmm. During the Great Depression, of course, and then during the Second World War. But other than that, we've continued, and, and the lineage can be traced right straight back to Mr. Lynch's lawn. That's amazing, <laughs> on West Palmetto. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. For viewers who may not have called you when we were with you at, the, at our Florence studio, or formerly when we taped uh, leading up to the production of Carousel, which you were also directing, can we talk real quick about yourself? Were you originally from the area? I was born and reared right here in Florence, located uh, right in this area where we are today. Did you uh, later attend school here? Uh, went, all my education has been right here in South Carolina. Is that Public right? Public schools. Uh -huh. Son of a gun. What did you study in, in college? Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was a history major, and I had a minor in theater and um, English. Is that mm -hmm. right? So you, there was definitely a focus to get back and, and always remain at some level in, uh, on stage. Well, I, I was in my first play when I was four years old, and I'm afraid I got the bug bite then and at have never found uh, the antidote. <laughs> at age four, Pat? Yes. That's amazing. It was fun. And to think that that has uh, stayed with you for so long, what a, an incredible pleasure. Was that at the Florence Little Theater? No, it wasn't. It was um, my my sister was in a play in junior high school, and um, they needed a, a, a small child, and I fit the bill. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, when we think about the extent of the, the activities going on at an early age, it's amazing when you think about even a, a, just a little later in life that you were the first woman elected to countywide office. Do yes. you mind me asking what year that was, Patsy? 1970. Is that right? Yes. And you went on to hold that role, and this was as uh, a Florence County's probate judge. Yes. You went on to hold that role for? 29 years when I resigned. 29 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. How were you able to maintain the duties as a probate judge here in the county, as well as all the activities you have at the Florence Little Theater? Well, my philosophy is you always have to do what you have to do. And then if you really and truly want to do something else, you'll find and make the time to do it. You have to give up certain other things uh, to be able to devote that kind of time to extracurricular activities, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Lots mm -hmm. of us do it. Very definitely, as, as we'll see with Robin in just a second. When we think about your association with the Florence Little Theater, that, that's a number when you try to think about how many years that's been, Patsy. When did you first uh, come in contact with the Little Theater? Oh, in my teens. In yeah. your teens? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Before you went off to school, yes. while you were off at school, were you able to come back and keep some activity? Oh with the yes, field? yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Were your parents ever involved with the Florence Little Theater? No, no. It was just a bug that you got. Of course, your sister had. Nobody some else in my family. Oh, come on. That's true. My my sister was helping with the production uh, when she was in high school. She was not in it. She was a singer, uh -huh. and um, that's. 
That's the only way I got started, I suppose. Maybe later I would have caught it again, uh, some other way, but just circumstances. Was your sister ever, I mean, considering that you were replacing her, at, at, uh, I mean, essentially helping her out at age four, was she ever, is there some level of jealousy when someone gets active or something no. and really falls in love with it? And Both my sisters uh, had beautiful voices. They were lovely girls. Um, and I just felt like, you know, they were queens of the world. Mm -hmm. And I was so much younger than they. So there was ne never any sibling rivalry. As a matter of fact, I was their doll baby. They played with me. They put me in a baby carriage and rolled me around <laughs> the neighborhood. <laughs> they made yeah. sure you weren't always in the spotlight. Yeah, well. That's right. <laughs> That's great. That's great. We obviously, the, a, a big focus, aside from the 80th anniversary, as I said, is, is uh, the September 5th kickoff of Kiss Me Kate. Is this a production that's been held at Florence Little Theater before? It's been done by the, this group once before, but not in this facility. It was done the first time in the old Air Base Theater, and um, not since then have we done it. Okay. Let's talk real quick. Go back, uh, of course, 80 years back to West Palmetto to Mr. Lynch's yard. Where have been the different locations uh, of the Florence Little Theater before its current location now? Oh, that was called the Community Players. And then, uh, because winter came after August, of course, uh, and they looked for an indoor facility, and the Pinewood Club allowed them to use their facility. However, the Pinewood Club burned down, <laughs> and performances were given in high schools in the YMCA. And um, later, after the war, we acquired our first real home at the Air Base Movie House and was converted into a theater volunteers built stages and built the stage and sewed the show curtain and installed lighting panels and it was just a real volunteer effort mm -hmm. and then in 1968 we built our present facility it was 1968 yes you all have been there 35 years yes yes that's amazing it sure doesn't show it doesn't show i mean it's a it, a incredibly well built but to think of all the productions that are going on there must have been some renovations in the interim um, Money being tight in every situation, especially in an Elia Mawson area organization, it's been a lot, there's been a lot of um, patching mm -hmm. going well, on there. It is, <laughs> of course, when we were there uh, taping and focused on uh, the, up, at that time, it was the upcoming production of Carousel, yes. to then be there as a spectator and to see uh, that, that opening night performance, it, it was an in incredible treat for folks who haven't visited the Florence Little Theater or seen performances. I was blown away, as a matter of fact. In tears, the second half of the, uh, just the, uh, Kevin, uh, so many of the, the voices associated with the performance, it was magnificent. Florence is, is so fortunate. We have such beautiful talent, and uh, it's in, embodied in people who are willing to share it in our forum. Some, some people sing in churches, which is where they get the most pleasure and, and joy, and, uh, and they don't have to contribute the kind of time it takes to be in a, in a performance at the theater. Mm -hmm. But we do have some marvelous talent that is um, generous enough to share. Yes, incredible. Patsy, will you share with the viewers a little bit about Kiss Me Kate for folks who may not have either seen, uh, seen the performance on, on the big screen, Catherine Grayson, I'm sure it's probably been done since she and Howard Keel did it. What's it going to be like uh, if, if someone was there September 5th uh, through <coughs> the 13th? Kiss Me Kate is um, what is known as a play within a play. We have this theatrical company. Uh, the main characters are recently divorced, a year divorced, and of course they still are in love with each other. And they are producing a musical based on Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew. So we have scenes in medieval Taming of the Shrew, and we have scenes in the 40s about the company. It's many layered and fascinating to see. Very exciting. Now, of course, viewers who may not have caught you in the past or seen you there at the Florence Little Theater may not be aware of the fact that this is this, nor Carousel, or the first two productions you've directed. You've directed a heck of a lot of performances there at the Florence Little Theater. Have you ever taken the time to add up how many you've directed? No, but it's it's 
quite a few. Quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. Over the years, yeah. It's a pretty amazing thing. I, you said earlier before we started, being a director is a very technical position. Yes. Is that uh, is that something that folks yearn to be the director of a performance, or is that something you really work into? I've heard that that most directors are frustrated actors, <laughs> <laughs> but I do like to act. I've I've been in several shows, and I do enjoy that. Uh, but I I enjoy directing, especially with musicals, because I'm not musical myself, and it's really the only way I can be involved in a musical, so I, I choose to be involved as a director. Oh, that's great. Will you be participating in other productions this season? Well, I don't know. I might just audition for something, oh, and right. maybe somebody would cast that's me. That's exactly right. It's all auditions, and that's the great thing about it. It's, it's yes. all based off, and so the director is really making the decisions. In a straight show, it's, it's entirely up to the director. In a musical, you have a choreographer and a music director and a director who's, um, who have to recognize all the aspects of a character and determine who comes closest to fitting the bill. Mm -hmm. Patsy, what do you think has contributed to the longevity of the Florence Little Theater? You know, there's nothing quite like live theater. You can watch television and go to the movies. But the experience of live theater is entirely different than anything else in that sort of um, vein of en entertainment. And some people never have enjoyed live theater, mostly because they haven't been. Right. Right. <laughs> but I think, um, I think that it is an entirely different experience. Mm -hmm. if you, I, I, I'm, I'm sure it's almost impossible to encapsulate uh, your involvement and the memories associated with your involvement in the Florence Little Theater. But if you could try to summarize your most memorable experience, do you have a most memorable experience in your years in productions involved in Florence Little Theater? I think it's opening opening night of any show I've ever done. When when you've worked as long and as hard as, as you have and everybody else has, to see that curtain go up, the lights come on, and the finished product there. It's really thrilling. She wasn't there on his lawn 80 years ago in <laughs> West Palmetto, but she's been through a heck of a lot of performances, and the opening night's a special one, but sitting in the crowd's probably a thrill for the Honorable Patsy Stone as well. Patsy, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Greg. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Robin Thompson coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're focused on the 80th anniversary of the Florence Little Theater. And we're visiting with its president, Robin Thompson. Good morning, Good morning Robin. Good to see you Thanks again. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Incredible opportunity, obviously, to hear Patsy talk about Kiss Me Kate, <laughs> to talk about Mr. Lynch's yard there on West Palmetto. But to think 80 years have passed and the celebration continues with the upcoming Kiss Me Kate on September 5th. It's amazing. It certainly is. Robin, what's that like being associated with a group, particularly a group of performers that have been around 80 years? Obviously, I enjoy it a lot since I play for about two of them a year, serve on the board, and work in every other. Uh, FLT is a big part of my life, and I enjoy every minute that I spend down there. And Robin, as the president of the Florence Little Theater, for viewers who may not have seen you in the past, that's not a full-time job. You travel daily to Dillon. Right. I'm, my real job, my job that I'm paid for, <laughs> is director of music and organist at Main Street United Methodist Church in Dillon. Um, I've been on the board of the Little Theaters. Uh, this is my third term. Um, this is my first time as president. So um, you just talk with Patsy. She's been president several times. Left lots of big shoes to fill there, <laughs> but they're also there to help me when I need them. So. Oh, yeah. We're keeping it going pretty well, I think. Robin, about yourself, were you originally from the area? Born in, right here in Florence. Went to school in Florence, did a degree at Francis Mary, and then went to Coker College over in Hartsville. Right. So I've stayed in this area my whole life. And you have family here in the area? Yes, sir. My father and my brothers and grandmother were all here in Florence. When did you first become interested in music, Robin? 
I think I started piano lessons when I was eight years old from the lady that had taught my mother and um, started playing in church and got involved with the little theater when I was, um, I guess I should play for the first show when I was in college. And um, then, uh, as I say, the rest is history. I've been out there playing a lot since then. But uh, I was piano first. I majored in organ and also studied voice. You said your mother was musically inclined. Were anyone else in the family? My brother Shaw is very musical. Uh, my father says we got all the talent in the family. He, he plays the radio and comes to watch. <laughs> and I have another brother that's a good audience participant, too. <laughs> That's you, another brother who's out in the audience on a right. regular basis. That's right. great. When, when you're in a performance and Shaw's not, do you all, uh, I mean, I'm sure it's fun at some level being behind the scenes, but do you ever get out in the crowd and, and watch performances from out in our seats? Oh, yes, I do. I certainly do, and he does for me. When mm -hmm. they were living in Greenwood, he'd come to every show that I played for. And Shaw has the lead in the second show of the season. So I'll be sitting in the audience every night rooting him on. Right. <laughs> I'll be right there. Right. Robin, what was your first position in the music field following graduation? The one that I hold right now as director of music at in Dillon in okay, Oregon. Theater. Great. I also teach piano, and I, I guess that would probably be my first one, but um, then when I finished my organ degree, the church I was in. Mm. Well, how about the first production that you participated in at the Florence Little Theater? The very first one I ever did, I played for a Christmas show called The Gift of the Magi. It was with two pianos, and I was one of the pianists that played. That was in Christmas, and then the following September, I was in Carousel. I think that production was in 1981 that Patsy directed. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I was on stage, and it was a bit before that. And Patsy pointed out a good thing. You know, I, I asked if she's going to be in any other productions the rest of the year. Of course, she pointed out auditions. Right. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe she'd make it. And I, I was about to ask, when did you become a part of the troupe, uh, the Florence Little <laughs> Theater troupe? But it really depends uh, on performance performance if you're selected. Right. That's a big deal. What's that like being in the director's shoes, knowing there's some folks that may not make it this time, but you want to keep them encouraged to come back again and keep coming back? That's a very hard uh, place to be. I have been musical director probably for some 25 or 30 shows, but I always had the director to work with. I directed South Pacific a couple of seasons ago, first time as director and musical director, and the buck stopped with me. I had to face the ones that I didn't cast, and that's not easy to do, because everybody that comes out, you want to use if you possibly can, but not every show is, there's, a, there's not a part for everyone in every show. So you try to let them know, please come back, because if this is not your show, hopefully we'll be doing one shortly that will be. Right, right. Robert, what do you think prompted you to join the board when you think of all the activities associated with being a performer? directing your performance. What about joining the board? That's a big responsibility. It has been. Our board, um, they have a nominating committee and they, they sort of come to you and ask you, would you be willing to serve? And because I, like I said, I do love the theater as much as I do, I felt like I could contribute something on the board as well. So when they asked me if I would um, let them nominate me, I said, yes, I would. And they've elected me every time. So mm -hmm. that's Can you share with the viewers what it's like obviously being in, in, the, in the president of the board position on this 80th season. It's uh, such a big year. I feel very honored and flattered to be the president of our 80th season. I'm um, looking forward to this season. I'm hoping it's going to be one of our best ones, and I just feel like it's really a nice honor for me to be able to be president in this special year. Mm -hmm. The season opens next Friday, September 5th, with the production of Kiss Me Kate. Obviously, Patsy talked about a little bit. Is there any anything else you'd want to add to what she... Oh, it's uh, a wonderful show. It's been recently revived on Broadway about four or five years ago, and this particular version of it is a revised, updated version. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful score. It's got Wunderbar, So in Love, um, another opening, another show. Um, there's one in there called I Hate Men, uh, <laughs> where it's the life that laid I led, and one of the cutest numbers in it is called Brush Up Your Shakespeare the two uh, gangsters sing. It's a wonderful score, and I've had a great time playing for it. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, of course, so many folks have seen the, as I said earlier, the big screen rendition of it, the uh, the, the Catherine Grayson and Howard Keel right. rendition, and remember the, the songs uh, so well. Amazing, amazing performance. How about some of the other offerings with the Florence Little Theater this season, Robin? I think it's a great season. We're, uh, the opening show is um, Kiss Me, Kate. That's underwritten by Carolina's hospital system. Mm -hmm. And then the second show is called The Man Who Came to Dinner. That one's being underwritten by PD Orthopedic Associates. That's a comedy. Very funny. Nice show. Um, the third show of the season's in December. It's called Nuncrackers, and it's a sequel to the musical Nonsense. And it's when those five nuns are celebrating at Christmas. 
That one's underwritten by Wachovia Bank. And then right after the first of the year, we have a classic, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, and that one's underwritten by the Morning News. And then we have another kind of comedy drama entitled The Exact Center of the Universe. It's underwritten by Drs. Chapman, Rainwater, and Clary. And then the final musical of the season is The Most Happy Fella, and that's underwritten by Chick-fil-A. So we've got a pretty good season coming up. Most Happy Fella may not be as familiar. It's by the composer that did Guys and Dolls and uh, How to Succeed in Business, Frank Lesser. It's a great show. Mm -hmm. And you're pointing out the underwriting, Rob. How do you all go about locking up potential underwriters? That's a pretty big deal, and I'm sure there's right. so many expenses associated with the performance. There really are. The royalties, the sets, the orchestra, I mean, for musicals, it, there are untold expenses in there. We've been very fortunate to have a, a, a huge number of people that buy memberships. We have our patrons and benefactors, but the underwriters give the largest amount, and uh, we solicit funds from businesses around in Florence, and we've been very lucky to have these people. We couldn't have carried on for 80 years had we not had support from not only the actors and people willing to come out and be in the shows, but the businesses and individuals who've been willing to financially help us put shows on the stage. Definitely, Robin, definitely. What do you think has contributed to the Florence Little Theater's 80-year run. It's incredible to say 80 years, but I, it's just so wonderful. I really think that FLT becomes a family. People that are involved in it have a lot of loyalty towards it. And just like if we have auditions for a show and we don't have enough people to cast it, we've got a list of people we can call and they don't turn us down. They'll come out and help us. And it's that kind of dedication and loyalty to the theater. They know we have a season, we have one coming up, and when the chips are down, but people will come through. And I, f I feel like it's that kind of camaraderie and uh, just sort of a family feeling that once it's established and you become a part of FLT, you're a part of the FLT family. And I think that's what's let it continue for 80 years. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Is there a special celebration planned to mark its 80th anniversary, Rob? We're planning one in March. Uh, we've I've set up a committee that's going to plan. We're going to try to do a big program at the theater and got several other things in mind. We're, we're kind of working the details out right now, but that's going to be a big celebration weekend and we want to look back over our 80 year history and kind of highlight seasons and moments in the theater that have let us be there for 80 years. So we're looking forward to that. That's coming up in March. We've just got a couple of minutes, Rob, and how about moments for you, memorable experiences? Is there any way, I know I asked Patsy that, and she pointed out it's the first night of every opening. Uh, first night is very exciting um, for me over the years, playing um, and being on stage. It's hard to pick one moment that stands out, but I'd have to say one of the greatest things for me is when I'm involved in it. It's a good show. I've made such wonderful friends. Patsy and I have worked together for years and years. And when, like she said, when you see all that hard work pay off and the curtain goes up and you've got a hit, that's a, that's a thrill. It really is. How about in performances with your brother, Robin? Oh, I love that. That was, you know, I'm 12 years older than Shaw. He's kind of like my child. So when he's up there, I, that really makes me real happy. <laughs> I enjoy okay. that a lot. And his, and, am I correct that Shaw's wife is also, also yes. I think, a uh, wonderful she, singer. She was in Carousel. She was in Carousel. She played Julie Jordan. She played Marion the Librarian when we did Music Man. Oh, she's wonderful. Very, very talented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If someone, if a viewer wanted to purchase tickets to any of the performances, can, can they buy breakdown performance performance or they have to buy a now you, season? The better deal is to buy a season ticket, but there's a box office price. You can buy them directly from the box office for each production. Okay. But you do have a considerable savings if you buy a season ticket. We have a partial season ticket and a, um, there's a student ticket and all in there. So if you're going to come to several of them, it's definitely to your advantage to buy a season subscription. But you can buy them individually for each show. Just call the box office. Okay, and Robin, you all have a website as well. Yes, we for do. The viewers who would want to check that out. All right, that's fairly new. We've been working on that. We're constantly trying to update that. We've got one board member that works very hard on that. Great. That's FlorenceLittleTheater.org. That's right. How about the phone number for a viewer if they wanted to buy a ticket or a season pass? Our um, box office number is 843-662-3731. And you can call on anyone there can put you, you know, send you the information I get with you. Well, golly. We think about the F. We think about the F in Florence Little Theater. That F, as you said, could just as easily be family. Right. It could be the family Florence Little Theater. I think all, all this past week we've been at the, the Florence Family YMCA. It's amazing to think how certain groups can encapsulate the family so well, and I've seen that. Uh, I saw it at Carousel, and, and obviously we're going to see it at Kiss Me Kate for viewers who will be there. 
starting next Friday. Robin, thanks so much for being Thank with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Stay tuned to more Carolina people coming up next. We want to thank the Honorable Patsy Stone and Robin Thompson for helping us celebrate the 80th anniversary of the Florence Little Theater.